Good day and what's good? It's your boy GQJ. Can you tell me what vehicle this is? I'll wait. Behold, the 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L 4x4 Overland. I've had this vehicle for a few moments and I can tell you guys it's a great exceptional vehicle, a major overhaul in this fourth generation Jeep Grand Cherokee. This came out around 1992 and Moe, I must say, it's come a long way. My mother had a 19, uh, what, 2008, I believe, Grand Cherokee Laredo, and this kicks butt compared to what was there in the past. Let's check it out. All right, so we're inside the 2021 Jeep Grand che Cherokee L Overland. And I must say, I've had this car all about five minutes and it has been a very pleasurable ride from the massage sheet, the infotainment screen, and the uh, instrument cluster where you could pretty much um, self input how you want the display screen to uh, operate. Very much a lot of options, very good. So with this nice big control dial in the center of the center console, it allows you to switch from your gear. So let's go put this baby in drive, hit the electronic parking brake and get on the road. Now, I'm gonna say with this Macintosh sound system, not to be confused with Macintosh like Apple, is a great sounding sound system. And as well, you have your tweeters up here on the dashboard with this kind of metallic font. It's a very nice touch in this vehicle. As you can see all around the vehicle, you have the American flag. This is an American car, so it's emphasized in this vehicle that you're driving a American Jeep. It's rugged. I understand that it's not a full luxury vehicle, even though it has a lot of luxury amenities in it. Like for instance, this large infotainment screen. Let's see if I can get the brightness up on that. It's touchscreen as well, integrated with buttons. And you could uh, control your heating and your cooling from here as well. In the touch screen, you have heated seats, heated steering wheel, uh, ventilated seats, and you can do uh, operate with these in both ways. You can operate from the digital touch or you can actually mechanically hit the corresponding button, buttons for heated seats. You have three levels. Each time you push, of course, it drops a level and the same thing for the ventilated seats. As well, this car comes with massage features. Now the massage feature is really nice in this vehicle because you have uh, various modes to uh, set your massage. You have a waterfall mode, which is a fan favorite. You must push the on button first and then hit waterfall mode and you got a nice digital display of how the seat will massage you as the driver or even your passenger. Very nice touch. 
tons of features in this vehicle. You got your auto ignition stop up here, your lane mitigation up here, your slip control, as well as your hazards and your park assist. Very, very nice. You got storage right here for wireless charging. You got two USB A's, USB C, and a nice touch still has an auxiliary plug. Now, where can you get that in a 2021 vehicle and beyond? As well, you have your nice 12 volt outlet. And again, I feel like all vehicles, no matter how far we go in the future, unless the tech is improved all around, we need our 12 volt outlets. I must tell you, we need those, all right? Of course, while it's charging down here. You have your rock mode, your sand and mud mode, snow mode, auto, and sport controlled by this lever and you have your four-wheel drive low button right. your cup holder is right here also has ambient lighting close that down now as well interesting feature to this vehicle you have your paddle shifters behind the steering wheel and they're not like a full paddle shift that you would have in most vehicles that have paddle sh shifters. They're halfway through the steering wheel. So only on the top part of the steering wheel do you have your downshift and your upshift paddle. But what is interesting, and I'll show you, is behind the steering wheel, you have your volume control and also station control and track switch control right underneath the paddle shifter. So we could raise the volume from right here and as well bring it down from right here. What I will say, is with the third row headrest being that when you look out of your rear view mirror it's kind of hard to see through the uh back rear view window you can actually send down the third row headrest when of course nobody is sitting inside of the third row and what do you do you go on the infotainment screen you hit vehicle you go to controls where you have three options in this vehicle but the other vehicles have tons of more options you got your mirror dimmer your third row headrest fold and your rear view camera and what we'll do we'll hit the third row headrest fold and as you can see now you have a greater view out of your rear window you can also access a rear view camera while you're in motion now that is a very interesting feature you know because not too many vehicles allow you to see the camera while you're driving. I'm actually surprised this past whatever, you know, standards that are required by the NTSB because this kind of serves as a distraction. But hey, I'm happy. I'm here for it. Anyway, so we can take that off. You got your rear view mirror dimmer. And as well, the nice part about this uh, mirror you have is also has a camera inside of it. You got tons of ways to see the back and that's actually pretty nice, you know. This car's got your six, as they would say, right? All right, perfect. And this three-row stretch vehicle is an awesome drive. The 3.6 liter, although it may be small, it does kind of pack a little bit of power. I wouldn't say it's a driver's, uh, you know, SUV or stretch SUV, but it gives you enough power for city to get, you know, going. You won't maneuver through gaps or shoot gaps pretty fast, but. It, it is what it is. I actually don't uh, depreciate the power. From what I hear, the larger engine, the 5.7 liter uh, V8, um, it's not that much of a, a drastic change in engine power, but the vehicle gives a good drive. I will say it should have better dampening. Some of the bumps you feel, you do feel the, the, the size and largeness of the vehicle when you're driving it. I mean, it is an off-road stretch uh, vehicle. So, I mean, there's certain things that I guess there's give and take when you come with this vehicle. But the intricate luxury details of the interior, the nice looking of the exterior, you know, a lot of the things where it falls or falters at is compensated with other nicer features. Again, this is a fourth generation Jeep Grand Cherokee, and this is actually the first in its class with the three row for the Jeep model. And I must say when I sat back there, the second row, nice nice and spacious the third row a little bit uh more tight but the only issue i had with the third row of being a six foot gentleman as myself is the foot the feet room that you have or the foot room you have between the seat and the, uh, the third row seat and the seat in front of you is a little bit tight but the comfortability body wise i didn't really mind at all clear around 60 61 thousand dollars this vehicle is very very nice and I think it's well priced out.
So there you have it. The 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L 4x4. It's been a pleasure. You guys know my slogan. You click, I drip. You subscribe, I drive. And until next time, don't forget to drip and drive, guys.